Hey guys, me Ronald Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. Pattern still favors Pacific Northwest Northern Tier through the 15th. Then the whole pattern and storm track begins to shift to the south, favoring California and the Central Rockies. And during that time frame, both periods, there's an overlap over the uh, the Tetons, and that's where I think the biggest totals are going to be. That's the snow bullseye throughout the period, two to three feet of grand total accumulation. I'll take a closer look at that in a second. But still, that initial storm looking rather weak and fast. The overall pattern continues to look less organized across the board. So the totals, in some cases, continue to trend down. Not all, but in some. And the northeast, a major shift today to the south on the storm for 213. Basically pulls all the snow out of the major ski areas for 213. So now the next big hope is for 216. It's a less consolidated area of low pressure, but it should move through the major ski areas. I'll show you that in just a few. All right, let me take you to water vapor satellite imagery. Um, so you've got your storm system right here. Um, there's also a little one kind of moving through Pacific Northwest BC Northern Tier, another one behind it, and then a fourth storm out here. So the first two are being guided up into the Pacific Northwest BC Northern Tier. The final two will likely catch a ride on the subtropical jet and be part of the shift to the south 216 through 222. I always try to uh, uh, forecast the timing of snowfall in a lot of areas. This is on my blog, christomer.com, um, under forecast totals. If you want to check this out, Tetons, Wasatch, the Colorado Central and Northern Mountain Zones, and the Sierra, I give you an indication of when I think the best snow is going to fall on what dates. And so if you want to check that out, you can. Let me show you the, uh, the jet pattern here moving forward. So that's the pattern by the end of today. Again, favoring the northern tier. It's still there on 213, 214, and also 215. Now at times, some of the snow may go down and sort of brush the Wasatch and the central to northern mountains of Colorado. We can see how close that jet stream is there. So there's 216, there's 217 end of day. This is where things really shift to the south. Brings an area of low pressure into the, uh, the California coast. And little pieces of that will move into the interior, but definitely not as impressive as it looked two or three days ago. Uh, again, just a lot less organization. The storm system's not nearly as consolidated and strong as they move into the interior. So we're going to have to rely on the flow pattern, I think, most of all, rather than organize, organize storm system snow. All right, let me show you forecast radar and satellite. So that's, that's the current situation with forecast snow across the northern tier. Kind of stays there, 213, 214. Um, reloads on 214 and the 215. This is what I was talking about. Some of that precip with the jet bending down does affect the Wasatch and also the central to northern mountains of Colorado, 215 and also 216. But once, you know, uh, two or three days ago looked like it was going to be a major storm system, 215, 216, 217. It's just, it is not looking that way now. It moves through much faster. And you can see now we're in a dry period on 217 in the interior. And then the pattern shifts, and you can see everything comes into California. And there's a storm that moves through the interior, but everything's moving very fast. There's 219, 220. There's not a lot to those. It's mainly a flow type of orographic snow rather than a pure storm snow or even a combination. So everything's a little bit more ragged. All right, my latest snow uh, forecast numbers look like this. Rest of today through tomorrow. Uh, five to eight up there in the in the Tetons. That's really the biggest snowfall amount. Everything else is one to three or one to four. Second period, 212 through 216. Everything starts to shift to the south. Pretty big numbers, one to two feet through the Tetons. Probably six to eight across the Wasatch. And the central to northern mountains of Colorado do fairly well, especially in the northwest part of the state up around Steamboat and Buff Pass, Cameron Pass. That northwest flow probably cranks out 8 to 12 inches there. 5 to 8 through Idaho, uh, looking good through parts of Oregon, and probably 6 to 12 up there through Tahoe and, uh, and uh, Mammoth Mountain. Third period, everything transitions a little further to the south, another 8 to 12 through uh, parts of the Wasatch, potentially another one to two feet for the Teton. So between those time periods alone, that's two to three feet. In Colorado, another four to eight inches will probably do it across most mountain zones. Um, so during those periods, that's backing up to 212, 216. You're looking at, you know, four to 12 and another four to eight in this period. So it's decent. It's not as big as it was, you know, 
uh, when it looked like we might have a major storm come through in the initial part of this, but uh, in this period, probably one to two feet through uh, the Sierra. Okay, let me take you to the northeast. I actually broke this up into two time periods so you can see this. 212 through 214. So that 213 storm, I mean, it's amazing to see the shift in this track. It's so far south now, I mean, it, there's basically nothing left for Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Second period, the storm on 216 or late 215 into 216 probably delivers light to moderate accumulations for the major ski areas. So that's really the next best hope. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.